This is the Power Break Podcast, number 177, titled, The True Hope of Christmas. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, mental, and physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. What's up, buddy? Well, here we are recording this on a date earlier, but we're going to release this on the 21st of December, so it's Christmas week here, and uh, things get busy for us. It's hard to... Well, it's hard to keep track of what's going on sometimes, but For sure. it's always important to be grateful, isn't it? Gratitude really does make a difference in life. Oh, man, it makes all the difference, right? I mean, I, I, you have quoted so many times all the different studies that have shown that people that are grateful live longer, they're healthier, their body is body's immune system's more effective. I mean, man, you could just keep going. But, yeah, gratitude, and it, and it all starts with your attitude of gratitude, right? Hey, that's right. That's the good, JT. So let's be a little grateful as we start this program today because we want to be grateful for all the people that have been listening to and are listening and spread the word about the Power Break podcast. We are in debt to you because in debt of gratitude to say thank you very much. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Thank you for telling others and thank you for taking the time to leave a rating and a review wherever you download the podcast. It really does help us and we're not in it for the money because there's we don't lose, we actually lose money on this putting it together. Oh, a hundred percent. One of these days, maybe somebody will come by and say, "We'd like to sponsor the Power Break podcast." But until then, here we are. Just we just put it out there, just because our desire is to glorify God and enjoy Him, as a as a Westminster Confession of Faith shorter catechism puts it in the first uh, question and answer. But we just want to glorify Him through the means of podcasting and through this Power Break podcast, just to give you a little help, as we say, to succeed in the race of life. Yeah, you know, and just to show a little gratitude towards you, my friend, I, I, I really, you know, that has always been something that's inspired me and been something I, I've tried to do as well, is just watching how you try to send the message of Christ through whatever means you have available to you. Um, you know, so, and that's something that all Christians are called to do, but that's something that you've been so effective at. So between the podcast and the blog and, um, you know, soon we're going to have uh, JT's corner. Uh, you do, you've written multiple books. I mean, just, I, I, I'm grateful for your efforts. I, I really am because it really does make a difference. Well, folks, JT and I have been friends for a good long time. We rode bikes together and, uh, of course, uh, share the time around the scriptures. And that's how this podcast started. We were sharing scripture and discipling uh, as we were going through. And I said, let's just uh, put the mic to it and be a little more structured and see what happens. And voila, we are in our third season coming up to beginning our fourth season, not too far from here. Crazy. And here we are, the podcast number 177. Can you believe it, JT? 177 no, so episodes of the Power Break podcast. Well, anyway, today we're talking about the true hope of Christmas, this being Christmas week. So JT, what are some of your Christmas hopes or some that you might have had in your lifetime or maybe you've heard of? Christmas hopes. You know, it, this is kind of the time of year where everybody feels like... Um, there's hope, right? And it's also the time of year where people who don't have hope feel it the worst, right? Um, you know, as a police officer, I saw both sides of it. I saw people who were grateful and hopeful, and I saw people who felt like they had no hope. Um, and, and, and really, you know, I, the thing that I love about hope is where it comes from. Um, I, I, I love the fact that hope comes from having faith and being loved by God, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's where our faith and our hope comes from. You know, I, I think we're going to talk a little bit about where Paul, um, where Paul talked about, uh, faith, hope, and love, um, are, are the three most important things of these love is the most important. And it seems that love is the thing that causes everything else. That's the, that's the tie that binds. That's the thing that kind of, and it all started with the hope that was given to us 
by the Savior coming and showing us how much he loves us, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, with Christmas, like, it, you know, everything is, uh, there's so many symbols of hope. and um, But it's just a time for us to remember that, man, God cared so much about us that, you know, John 3.16 says it all. He sent his only son, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think of when I think of Christmas. I, I love Christmas because, not because of the, the gifts or anything like that, like all that stuff is, that's a show of gratitude and that's why we give gifts, um, but at least for me, but but really the, the biggest thing is the hope that's there. It's like, wow, man, we had no hope. And now we have that hope in front of us. I mean, how about you? How, what, what do you think about when it comes to like Christmas and hope? Uh, it's amazing. You just take a look around. People hope in a lot of things. They hope for world peace or they hope they hope they'll get a lot of Christmas gifts or they hope for cold weather, even in Florida. Can you believe that? People think they, they, you go around here and snow, snow, snow. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, people uh, really anticipate, uh, that's what hope is, it's an anticipation, an expectation. And some people anticipate the, this warm, fuzzy Christmas feeling. But as we, were, uh, as we want to talk about today, that uh, the, the true hope of Christmas, I just pointed out, uh, I just want to point out that everyone seems to have a different hope for Christmas. But the hope of a Christian at this time of the year is, as you mentioned, JT, is maybe a renewed hope that was presented to the people in the Old Testament times, and that was the advent or the, the entering in of Messiah. Although he has come, we still can appreciate and even hope in anticipation of this time of the year where we replay his first advent, knowing that's not the end of the story. He has come and stepped into our world, and he has come and he has died for us, Uh, just as the scriptures teach. And he has, according to the scriptures, risen from the dead, and he is alive forevermore. Plus, he has promised another advent, his second advent, his promised return. Notice in Revelation chapter 1 that the one who came announces the fact, as he's also ascended, he announced to John, he says, I am the living one, I died, behold, I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Well, really, that's the consideration of the true hope of Christmas. Jesus Christ has stepped into our world. He's accomplished exactly what he set out to do. He's returned to the the throne of the Father where he's at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. And he rules and reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will soon return to gather his own to his uh, promised place of bliss forever and forever. That is the true hope of Christmas, and that's what we want to talk about today. Man, so good. Um, yeah, let's continue to talk more about that as you turn to, as we turn, you turn, you turn. I didn't make a U turn. What's U-turn. going on here? What? what? I turn, huh? you turn, we all turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a turn at trying to say my line correctly. That's what I'm going to do. Um, all right. So, all right, JT. Well, let's turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, I'm telling you, it's a plethora of plethora of resources. I'm going to get this down, Bob. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but there's well, a, folks, I, I think you can tell that JT is struggling to breathe today. Somehow he's caught up, not with the, the virus, the coronavirus, but he's no, caught it's up not with... Corona. Uh, no. No, it's, it's, anyway, he's, and he's recording in his studio, and so nobody will catch anything by listening to JT today. But Gosh, I man. feel sorry for him. The dude maybe cough or sniff or whatever, but uh, he'll get better. We thank the Lord that he, God does give us recovery from those things. Absolutely, yeah. I, I have this very ancient disease that nobody seems to care about anymore. It's called a cold. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that of course is, you know, nobody seems to care about, but I, I have had Corona. This cold feels just like it. Anyway, um, I digress. So go to bobrubaker.com, check out the resources. And, uh, at the very least you should sign up for the blog. It will come every Monday, uh, and get you started for the week and it'll get you ready for what we're going to talk about on, um, the podcast. So let's continue to talk more about the true hope of Christmas. 
As I wrote in the blog, when you hear the hope of Christmas, you have to realize there are a number of people that have different meanings with that expression. For some people, the hope of Christmas is the warm, fuzzy feeling they recall as a child looking forward to the time of opening gifts from Santa Claus. For others, it's the hope of getting together as families. Still, others have a hope of Christmas peace and goodwill toward all men, toward uh, looking forward into the new year and spreading throughout the earth. What then is the true hope of Christmas? As we mentioned that we look into this true hope of Christmas, first of all, we need to get a definition of what we're talking about. Hope, according to the biblical definition, is an expectation that is grounded upon fact. In other words, it's merely an expectation based, it's not based on feeling that you, that would be a wish, but... Uh, when we talk about the hope of Christmas, many people, it's just a wish. So let's look at the hope of Scripture. It is a sincere or earnest expectation based on fact. And the fact is what the Scriptures teach, namely the promises of God. So based upon God's promises concerning the coming of Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a word of hope that is presented in the midst of darkness, namely some very dark times. So please notice the last words of the promise are the promises of the zeal of the Lord will perform this. And the hope that is presented is not a wish of man, but the statement is the statement of fact based upon the reliability of God. Isaiah 9 and verse 2, it's often heard about this time of the year when it says, the people People who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shone. And then those famous words from Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. The throne of his of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time for, forth and forevermore. And then those words, The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Now, the word of Christ in Christmas is the key because the true hope of Christmas centers around the person, Jesus Christ, who stepped into our world to purchase our salvation from the wrath of God and saving us from our sins. He came to declare to us the glory of God the Father and execute the will of the Father completely and to return to his home in heaven as the mighty conquering king who won the victory over sin, Satan, and death itself on our behalf. So... At the resurrection, he's declared to be the Son of God with power, so his ascension back to heaven gave us hope in his second coming, and again, a hope that's not based on good feelings or man-made tradition, but upon the reliability of the Word of God. So the hope of Christmas, the thing that really we should focus on, is Jesus Christ himself, the person, the purpose, and the accomplishment of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you need some hope at the time of the year, this the Lord Jesus Christ is the place to look. He's the hope of Christmas and throughout your life. Man, such good stuff. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I was reminded as we were getting ready to um, do this podcast, I was reminded of um, one of my favorite parts of Scripture, and that's Romans 5, 3. Um, and basically what it says, it talks about hope and how hope is developed. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I love what Paul says here. He says, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame. And here's the part that, that it talks about love and how it's vital to it because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy spirit who has been given to us. And if I would add been given to us by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you, you nailed it. I mean, it, that's what we focus on. We focus on Christ, why he came, how the hope was given to us by him. And it was done through because of God's love for us. And, and yeah, it's just, man, what a great topic. And it's a topic that we really need because a lot of us, man, are looking at all these crazy headlines now, you know, there's always something about China and our relationship with them is strained to say the very least. There's always something about Russia. Our relationship with them is strained to say the very least. Um, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. we have supply chain issues. We have inflation. We have all kinds of things, you know, so a lot of people are struggling to find this, this thing, this hope, um, you know, and, and hope was given to us by 
the man Jesus Christ who cannot, that cannot be taken away from us. So it's so incredibly important for us not to look at this other stuff and try to say, all right, well, you know, through our perseverance, through all this stuff, we'll build hope. It's no, through our perseverance, through life, with our focus on Christ, that's how we build hope. Um, that's right. Yeah, it's so important. A true, true expectation because we, uh, we know he cannot lie. That's important. Yep. Well, the article is called The True Hope of Christmas. You'll find the blog at BobRebaker.com. So what's happening this week, Bob? Anything in the news we need to know about? Well, the news from the Power Break podcast is this. Check out the book Finding Delight in the Lord's Day at BobRebaker.com. When you find delight in the Lord's Day, you're focused on Christ, on his day, and, and as just putting that... Uh, in the center of your mind, in the center of your family, it will help you find delight in the Lord. And that gives you hope. All It just kind of renews your hope. That's what the Lord's Day is all about. Give us a renewed hope and, and confidence in the Lord. So check it out at Finding Delight in the Lord's Day at BobRebaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. And uh, you'll find those sermon links along with the books and everything else at BobRebaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Rubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering that question on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. Are you ready for question number one, the big cheese, the whole enchilada, my friend? <laughs> You're making me hungry when you start talking like that, JT. That's, that's, I think that's actually why I said it. I'm actually hungry. All right. Boiling it all down, what is the true hope of Christmas, and why is it important to get this right for us? You've probably seen that expression, no peace, and no peace. Uh, well, excuse me, let me back up. It, it's no Christ, no Jesus, N-O Jesus, uh, equals no peace. K-N-O, or A-N-O, uh, let me get it right. No peace equals no. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Well, you can apply it to hope, okay? Without Christ, you have no hope. That's exactly where I was going. So, man, I really messed that one up. If we were if we were like some people, we would just strike that one. Let me do that again. It was interesting. I was listening to this famous podcaster, and uh, he started over on something, and they forgot to edit it out. Oh, <laughs> that always hysterical. makes people feel good. I caught you. Anyway, boiling it down, here's what we have. The true hope of Christmas is the hope presented in the Old Testament, looking forward to the first advent of Messiah. Words like, as we read from Isaiah 9 and verse 6, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Also in Isaiah 42, he says, Behold my servant whom I am uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Notice this. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice, make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and faintly burn. Burning wick, he will not quench. Now, uh, I preached on this uh, several weeks ago, but it's really good stuff when you think about it. This was fulfilled. Actually, Matthew quotes this uh, this portion of scripture in Matthew chapter twelve. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't call attention to himself. Okay, he didn't have the fanfare when he was born. Actually, the the angels came to mere shepherds and said, uh, "Go and check this out in Bethlehem." Right, so. He, he didn't have all the fanfare like he's the, he was born a king, but nobody you know, they didn't have the fanfare. Matter of fact, Joseph and Mary actually had were told to escape to Egypt for a while while Herod was trying to kill the children, right? Because he didn't want any competition. But notice it says a, a bruised reed he will not break, break, or a faintly burning wick he will not quench. That's the tenderness of Christ. That a bruised reed is is a is a bent over reed or a bent over stick or something like that. And he doesn't just straighten up, okay? And a faintly uh, or, or a faintly burning wick. Sometimes the fire in our lives is very faint. He doesn't he doesn't uh, quench that. Yeah. So he's very tender about that. And that's and, you know for those who are after his first advent, okay? Christ is the hope, the expectation of the heart. And so Colossians says. Uh, to them, chose uh, God made known to the great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is this is a verse that is quite uh, familiar to you, JT, and one of your favorites. That Christ in you is the hope of glory. Yeah, uh, and so 
It's, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul says, I just want to know him and the power of his resurrection, the share in his sufferings become conformable to his death. Again, it's Christ is the evident effort the emphasis here. And in Philippians chapter three, it says our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we wait for a savior. The Lord Jesus Christ will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to be, uh, to, uh, even to subject all things to himself. So why is this all important? Well, this will test the test of time, even through all time and eternity. It's not a wish. It's an expectation. Everything is based on the expectation that Christ would come into this world. He did. And so we expect him to come again because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through him. That is our hope. We have access to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, and it's an amazing hope. It's such an amazing hope that it is very distinctive from every other religion in the world, right? Um, everything that that's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing that makes it to where, wow, this is completely different. You know, it's why I've, I've always loved the Bible that if a human being could write it, they wouldn't because they put a whole bunch of, you know, stuff in there that, that human beings didn't recognize like women being witnesses and all kinds of things. I mean, it was so obvious that it was directly from the hand of God. And then, and then on top of that, this relationship, this is a relationship that isn't, that is distinctive from every other relationship. And that's why I just, you know, it, it, it's so important for me to try to explain to people, Hey, listen, I mean, this is a hope that, that is above and beyond anything that you can comprehend because, um, the promise happened, the promise came and now the promise will continue. I mean, it, it's, it's such, right. it's such an That's awesome right. thing. Yeah. So question number two That's good stuff, JT. Yeah. I, you know, every once in a while. Um, so question number two from the mental aspect. So how do we keep this true hope foremost in our minds? Because man, is it hard with all the distractions? Um, so many things around us that kind of dash our hopes. And I, I, I actually get very frustrated because I see people that purposely dash other people's hopes, almost like they think it's entertaining. Um, so how do we keep this foremost in our mind when all around us, um, you know, the hopes um, did, just aren't really coming true or, or things aren't really happening, right? Yeah, there's a lot of distractions for sure. And that means anytime there's distraction, we need to really treat things with a matter of focus. Now, at one time, you know, in in the seasons of life, both of us are old enough to remember that they actually played Christmas carols (laughs) this time of the year that all talked about the hope uh, of the coming of Messiah and the hope of Christmas being the Lord Jesus Christ. But Since our day when we, we like to keep Christ out of things, it seems like in the in the world system that uh, people have lost hope because the the hope of Christmas, the hope of any time is the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a matter of focus. Now, when we talk about focus, I want you to listen to what the Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter three. He says, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And for this sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and to share in his sufferings. He goes on to say, I forget those things which are behind, and I reach forward to those things which are before. Yep. In other words, he is focused on Christ. Now, that's 365 days a year, and it gives us hope during Christmas time because we look at the, the, uh, how Christ entered into our world in the, in the incarnation. But it also gives us hope because even as we turn to him, we understand he came, he, he suffered, he died, he rose again from the dead, he ascended on high. And because of that, he's at the right hand of God making intercession for us, and we look forward to his return. And so his word is true. He cannot lie. And so for that, we bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, as it says in Second Timothy or Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And so when we come to the how do we keep things in proper perspective, 
focus, my friends, focus upon Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, the, the transforming of your mind um, through the different trials of life and the building of endurance and building of character and all those things, you know, there's, it, it's so important for us to, like you said, you got to stay focused. You got to stay focused on, you know, the, the, the love that was given to you, the hope that it, it actually um, brought out in you. Um, and then the faith that comes with that, you know, it, it's those three things work together so well. And, you know, I, you know, it's funny when I, I think when I first read, uh, cause usually you find faith, hope, and love all in the same spot in scripture, especially in the new Testament. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever really put all that together, but, but they are so interwound with each other. Um, it's, um, you know, focus on those things and, and it, and that's what will keep you in the right mental place, especially through Christmas and the holidays and, and keeping your focus, you know, keep your eye on the prize. Right. Isn't it? That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the things, um, that, uh, it wasn't my grandmother that used to say that. I think it was my grandfather on my dad's side that said, you know, keep your eye on the prize. Um, it, it's, it's right in front of you, but the moment you take your eye off it, you're going to lose it. So keep That's your right. eye on it. Yep. All right. So question number three, turning to the physical aspect of life as always. So let's talk some more about what you brought up last week and maybe something healthy about taking, or there may be something healthy about taking a break from our workouts. Um, did I get that right? Did I get that question right? Hold on for a second. All right. Yeah, me... that, that's right. Oh, okay. Is, is, it healthy? is it a healthy thing to take a break from workouts? Now, now, week-long breaks from exercise can actually help you improve your fitness. Whoa, stop the music. Let's talk that about that. I did know yes, that. Yes, week-long breaks can actually, can actually help you uh, with your workouts. Here's why. Number one, we become less motivated to exercise around this time of the year anyway. We have all those parties to go to and people to see and places to go and things to do. And what happens is we become more fatigued at this time of the year during exercise, so we enjoy it less. We often go through plateaus in fitness gains any time, and so sometimes we just need to take a break, just take a week off. And plus, sometimes, especially at this time of the year, because we're doing all kinds of other stuff, we come up with new sets of aches and pains. Did that happen to you, JT? Uh, yeah, I just I thought that was just me getting old. But that's the time of year? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it, could, it could be. Anyway, these are all signals to you that a break is needed and everyone is different. So if you ever notice shorter or longer frames of time from throughout your, throughout your training year, as little as uh, four weeks or as much as 12 weeks, the onset of sometimes there's, there's signals that say, you need a break, you need a break. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's your, it's just your, your um, undisciplined self that say, I need a break. I, need, you know, like, I, need, <laughs> I know that, dude. I don't want yeah. to climb that hill this time, you know. But, uh, you know, but other times it is your body. And actually, there, it has been proven that people uh, will be remotivated by taking the time off and also – uh, find as they come back, they come back with with uh, fervor, and they actually make some fitness gains. Yeah, so it's worth thinking about. It's worth thinking about. Just take a break. Yeah, no, I I don't disagree with that at all. I think that keeping passion for things. One of the things when we moved up here, Bob, that I liked was that it kind of forced you to take breaks from certain things, because uh, you know once it gets to a certain point as far as being cold or there's snow on the ground, there's not going to be a lot of mountain biking going on, right? So it kind of forces you to, oh, well, why don't, oh, yeah. why don't we go skiing instead? Um, so it, it, it kind of forces a break. But when you come back to it, like in the spring, you know, you're like, you're really motivated. Like, man, this is awesome. I forgot how much I loved it. And, you know, so it's, it's always nice to let your heart grow fond with a little bit of an absence, I think. <laughs> Good point. Well, with all things, though, I mean, if we're going to do take a break, it takes discipline to schedule the break and then, of course, come back from the break. It takes discipline. But as we point out all the time, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 177. 
And submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering those questions on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for Finding Delight in the Lord's Day. That's the book that we're offering this week that you'll find at bobbrubaker.com. It's just a description of how you honor the Lord with honoring His day, the Lord's Day, and check it out at bobbrubaker.com. Click on the resources, scroll through the resources to the books, and through the books you'll find Finding Delight in the Lord's Day. And real real quick word, JT, is this is being uh, published on um, Christmas week, uh, and we hope that everybody has a Merry Christmas. We appreciate you listening to the Power Break Podcast. Yeah, so awesome. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast, and go to bobrubaker.com to check out notes, Bob's weekly blog, and other really cool things, and Merry Christmas from the Power Break Podcast. <laughs>